So thank you, Zohar, for inviting me. Uh, today, I want to speak about the virtue of common ownership in corporate compliance. Actually, the starting point to the academic work was the ever-increasing criticism against common ownership, a structure in which small group of large institutional investors like BlackRock, Vanguard, Fidelity, State Street have horizontal holdings. They have shares in firms that operate within the same industries and are supposed to compete with each other. According to the criticism, such an ownership structure reduces competition and accordingly arms consumers. We can see one example of giant asset managers, BlackRock, who have significant shares in uh, the healthcare sector, in Johnson Johnson, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, Allergan, Mylan, Perigo, and many more. Just to complete the picture, against this criticism, some very prominent scholars like Ed Rock and Daniel Rubinfeld argue that criticism is overblown and is based on misconceptions. But instead of taking any position in this common ownership antitrust debate, my article argues that common ownership may have a virtue, an upside in corporate compliance. During the past few years, the DOJ, the SEC, and their colleagues have increasingly directed their resources towards enforcement of laws and regulations that are industry-oriented. They cover specific industries. We can see some examples. We have the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, the FCPA, which is focused on the healthcare and the energy sectors. We have the FCA, which is focused on the healthcare, energy, and banking sectors. We have the Bank Secrecy Act and the Anti-Money Laundering, which is by their very nature are focused on the banking uh, sector. And we have many more uh, uh, industry-oriented laws. My article argues that institutional investors that invest in firms in line with the common ownership structure are uniquely positioned to enhance compliance with these laws and accordingly minimize the exposure to what I term macro-legal risks, risks that are relevant to firms that operate within specific industries. Institutional investors can take advantage of three interrelated merits. First, they may have enhanced incentives to monitor uh, compliance of firms uh, with uh, laws and regulations that are industry-oriented. Second, they have privileged access to lawmaking and rulemaking. Third, they can enjoy experimental learning. Let me begin with incentives. We are all familiar with the traditional passivity story, according to which large institutional investors lack incentives to monitor their portfolio companies, companies in which they invest. Let's recall some of the statements that constitute or explain the passivity story. For example, we have Michelle Atkins, head of uh, corporate governance at BlackRock. In the US, we voted about 3,700 companies' meetings a year. Now, globally, we voted about 15,000 companies each and every year, or votings each and every year. We have some very prominent scholars that explain how votings on many issues of corporate governance require significant firm-specific analysis. These issues according to Choi, Fitch, and Khan, are transaction-driven issues. We have also former commissioner at the SEC, Daniel Gallagher, that explains how institutional investors may not be able to invest in the costly research needed to ensure that they cast each vote in the best interest of their clients. And finally, justifiably, we have Babchuk, Professor Lucien Babchuk, uh, that explains how with respect to many issues in corporate law, deciding which arrangement is optimal is highly contestable and controversial. Let's recall board composition, executive compensation, 
anti-takeover tactics, uh, the splitting of the roles of CEO and the chairman, all of these issues are highly controversial. All truths, but when speaking about the combination of common ownership together with macro legal risks, all of these statements are less valid here, less relevant here. First and foremost, enforcement of laws and regulations that target companies that operate within common industries, similar industries, target firms with similar lines of business, in such cases, institutional investors can apply more generic models, one size fits all model, rather than firm specific analysis. In such a case, institutional investors can really enjoy economies of scale. And lastly, when speaking about a compliance with laws, the FCPA, the FCA, and many more, the line between legal and illegal conduct is more obvious, is more verifiable. In such a case, the ability of institutional investors to convince management to follow laws and regulations is likely to be high. Relatedly, incentives of institutional investors to monitor firms are directly correlated with level of exposure, which in turn is directly correlated with the level of common ownership. Today, the risk of being subjected to criminal investigation, this risk is quite high. The DOJ and its colleagues uh, um, dedicate huge efforts to detect and prosecute companies for the violation of macro or flows and regulations that are industry-oriented. Just to illustrate, the FBI and the SEC created units that are dedicated for the enforcement of the FCPA. The SEC and the DOJ now use developed mechanism for enforcement of laws and regulations. First and foremost, they have the whistleblowers. Just to illustrate, the SEC received more than 200 tips about the FCPA from whistleblowers in 2016. In 2017, 90% of the FCA, the False Claims Act recoveries, were initiated by whistleblowers. Once detected, corporate criminal conduct may have dramatic negative implications for firms. Okay, today companies pay huge fines for the DOJ. Just to illustrate, companies included in the FCPA top 10 list paid an average of over 500 million per company. We have also collateral damages, investigations of corporate wrongdoing take years to complete. Again, to, again, to illustrate, it was recently reported that four years was the median length of FCPA scrutiny. Also, government enforcement also triggers civil actions brought by private plaintiffs. Moreover, most of criminal investigations end with very costly deferred prosecution agreements that include very burdensome requirements such as uh, compliance programs and outside uh, compliance monitors. We can see the numbers reported by Jennifer Arlen and Marcel Kahn. And finally, criminal investigations by their very nature lead to reputational loss. Or before proceeding, a common ownership creates an aggregate exposure for each institutional investor. This is likely to drive institutional investors to become more effective monitors when speaking about dealing with macro legal risks. The article provides us some concrete examples of how institutional investors engage with firms in which they invest regarding macro legal risks. First and foremost, we can see how State Street, BlackRock, and Fidelity engage with firms about the US FCPA and the UK Bribery Act. Second merit I want to talk about is related to how common ownership 
further empower institutional investors and allow them a privilege access to lawmaking and rulemaking that accordingly allow institutional investors to identify in real time new trends in laws and regulations and accordingly allow institutional investors to inform companies in which they invest and when necessary warn them against new trends in laws and regulations. We all know that large institutional investors interact with policymakers through off the record conversations. We can see the numbers here. <coughs> this data is drawn for the, from the public calendar of the SEC chairman. During the past few years, the head of BlackRock, Fidelity, State Street, and Vanguard had many one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, meetings with the chairman of the SEC. The article also provides specific examples of how institutional investors actively engaged with policymakers to assist in the development of laws and regulations that are relevant to the uh, article. Last merit is related to uh, experimental learning, okay? Common ownership actually creates a network of companies in which institutional investors invest. Such a network facilitates information flow and allow institutional investors to use experience from uh, uh, criminal investigations or uh, informal investigation of some companies and to go and warn other companies in which they invest. This uh, gives okay, institutional investors wider perspectives on laws and regulations and given that various factors, not just pure legal factors, may affect the agenda and the attitude of the policy makers and the regulators, okay, this is especially important. Summing up, recall that concerns about the antitrust implications of common ownership focus on the aggregate power of investors, allowing them to lessen competition. However, as a mirror image of this concern, aggregation may actually drive investors to more effectively monitor companies' compliance with laws and regulations. Thank you very much.